My name is Wayne and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to see if I can learn how to weld. Now if you've been following my channel along for very long, you know I have two projects left to do. That's the rear sway bar and the subframe connectors. And that means I need to do some welding and I really want to do it myself. But again, I need to learn how to weld. I have a MIG welder, but I'm terrible at it. So today we're going to focus on improving those skills. Now my past videos, I asked for some comments and tips on welding and you guys left them. I'm going to take those to heart. And I've also been watching some YouTube videos as well to try to get some instruction to see what I could be doing wrong. And uh, let me show you what we're going to do. I had one of those subscribers leave a couple of comments saying that I really should invest into a heavier gauge extension cord since I need one for the MIG welder. So I went and bought this 10 footer. Um, it's like a 10 gauge wire, pretty heavy duty. I want to keep it really short, just as short as possible. And I think 10 foot will work. I'm just going to be using it in my garage and that's going to help out. Now I also noticed on my um, regulator that the flow gauge was not working. So I went ahead and bought this one to replace the gauge I have. And a further inspection, I noticed the last project that this MIG welder was used for by somebody else, it had 35 wire on it. And this is 30. So 35 is going to be a little heavy for most everything that I'm going to be doing. So I picked up some tips. And then I picked up one of these little magnets. I just thought that would be kind of fun for the shop because I also picked up some material to practice welding on. You know, before I showed, I had some scrap metal in the in the garage, but it was really, really rough. And I think that was not helping my cause. I want some clean metal to practice welding on. Um, nothing that's been, you know, 50 years old and uh, like I had before. So this is going to help out a lot, I think. So I picked up some eighth inch as well as three sixteenths. The three sixteenths is the heaviest I'm going to have to weld. And it's the front brackets for my subframe connectors. Um, the subframe connectors themselves and some of the other brackets I need to weld are eighth inch and again the sheet metal on the car is going to be thinner. So I also picked up some 70 thou sheet metal and uh, I'm going to trim that up and I'm practice welding on some new clean metal. Now the other thing I want to do is pick up a wel uh, welding helmet. This is an auto darkening helmet I bought. It, I just bought it off Amazon. It's like 50 bucks. The one I have, I can't see out of it at all. It's just terrible. So I figured this would be a good investment, make it a little more enjoyable. It's fun. I've always wanted to try one of these. And for 50 bucks, you know, I figure, ah, can't go wrong and it's only going to help. So I'm really trying to put myself in a position where I can succeed at welding because I was utterly failing before. So I have a few things we're going to update and uh, give it a shot. So one thing I noticed when I was changing my wire is when I took off my nozzle that, uh, well, first off, it kind of all fell apart and I cleaned the inside of it out to try to get it to work until the new ones came in. But what I noticed is that the, the tip of the nozzle was sticking really far past um, the contact tip, which seemed odd after doing a little bit of research. Again, I'm pretty new to all this. So I ordered up replacements for my Miller 130 and you can see how much shorter it is. So it seems like this should be flush or pretty flush with my contact tip. So I think that's gonna be a big difference because I had to have a lot of stick out for this even to work and more than what was ever recommended or suggested. So we're gonna go put the new one on and uh, yeah, see how that works. Alright, this will be my first attempt at welding with everything swapped over and updated. And I'm 
going to use the 8th inch material that I picked up. And the MIG settings are going to be a voltage of 4, which is the highest for 8th inch material. And the wire speed is 50. And that's based off the recommended settings on the welder itself. So let's give it a try. Yeah. I, I can already see where I can, the rolling table will, will be huge. I don't have anything well done, so this kind of sucks. first thought is uh, the welding helmet is fantastic it really allows me to see a lot better and um, yeah I probably should get my welding gloves out and that bead seemed to go a lot better and, uh, let's get rid of this magnet now and now I'm just gonna try to Put a little weld in there for a little bit and see how it goes. Oh, these gloves are really uncomfortable. Jeez. say now again I was trying to do like a little lowercase cursive ease um, yeah all right I think she's gonna need more practice lots more practice bad I mean I think with some more practice and if I can get that kind of weld on a, on a joint I'll be doing a whole lot better I need some pliers to hold this thing cool all right so I went and got my tank refilled and the other thing I found out was that my tank was straight argon had no idea but it's not what they suggest they recommend a 75 25 like with co2 uh, blend for MIG welding so I really don't know how big of a factor that was, but I know this is supposed to be better, so a lot of changes are going to be happening, and I'm excited to see what all these changes do.
show that to you guys. But it's looking a lot better. So decent penetration on the back side there. And uh, so I just, again, I've been working on that joint. Here I tried just, you know, not doing any technique, just a steady push. And here I'm trying to do the lowercase e's. And uh, it looks decent, actually. I mean, for me, I should say, so it looks like the best I've done so far. I'm going to back down the wire feed a little bit and try this up here on this joint. Or maybe I'll start with the same setting and just see how it works on this little uh, like male joint. So we'll try that now. Last little bit of welding I'm going to do on this video. So I just got some clean metal, started fresh. The other one was getting kind of big and bulky that I've been working on, tacked it together, and I'm going to see. Hopefully, I can put my best bead down here and end the video on a good note. And we'll take a look. hard time following or finding you know the edge I wanted to weld those were like some of my better welds but
right, let's take a look at some of the welds. So this was the first piece I started on, not including this, just trying to get a weld settings working right. And again, this is when I also had the wrong gas um, and the wrong uh, nozzle on the gun. So had some issues and had some a lot of issues in there. And again, wasn't working well. And then I made the switch to the proper gas and the new nozzle and things started going a little better you can see that is a big improvement from this garbage still had a problem in there in the female joint uh, let's see let's flip it over uh, did some more welding there another joint just yeah completely missed the joint on this weld and that one actually probably looks the best that I'm on this piece that I've done that actually looked pretty good um, so I guess you can call some of that progress and then today I don't know what happened but when I fired up the welder it just worked terrible this first pass but I think what was happening it sounded like the wire there was a little bit of a bend um, in the welding cart on the cable so I started sorted that out in the gun and then it started to I mean flow a little better um, that looked good then I kind of messed up on my start and stop again and yeah so needless to say there's a little bit of progress there at times I just need more practice right so there you have it after a couple weeks of fiddling with the welder and trying to get things sorted out and learn a little bit more about MIG welding I made some progress but I am definitely not ready to start welding on the car yet I want the welds to come out better and be more confident and just figure out you know the settings be able to listen to the welder figure out what it needs and make those adjustments but uh, I think I'm getting closer so but you're probably going to see another video of practice welding hopefully we'll be another step further ahead and then what I want to do is practice you know welding different gauges and material together as well as you know putting some of the metal in my vise to practice welding like vertical up vertical down Stuff I know I'll have to do underneath the car. So that's probably what will be happening next. Well, that is going to be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you have any comments, please leave them below. I love hearing your tips and thoughts on the video. I do appreciate it. It means a lot to me. So thanks for watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. I really appreciate it. And if you turn on the bell notification, you'll be notified each and every time I upload a new video.